What up folks, Alex here, welcome to Mr. Alex Tech. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this really simple, cool RGB split, glitch, chromatic aberration, style effect, individual resolve using the prism blur effect. Now, Prism Blur is available within the free and studio versions of DaVinci Resolve, so everyone should be able to do it. It's a really cool effect. It's quite popular in music videos as well as some gaming stuff these days, so it's quite a handy one to know how to do. So, with all that out of the way, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and take a look. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve. We're currently on the Edit tab, and I've got my timeline set up with a couple of sample clips, as you can see. Now, as with most effects within DaVinci Resolve, you can either apply them directly to your footage on the timeline, or you can apply them to an adjustment clip. For this demonstration, we're just going to apply it directly to the footage on the timeline. So I'm going to open up the effects library, top left hand corner. We're going to come down to open effects, give that a click, and you need to scroll down until you get to the Resolve FX stylize area, and then you want to grab this one. It's the prism blur effect. So give it a click and then drag it onto your footage on your timeline like so. Now straight away you'll see that you've got this sort of blurry, slightly RGB effect. So you can just see here, if we zoom right in, you can see we've got the red, green and blue here, but the whole footage is a little bit blurry. So what you need to do, give your footage a click on the timeline so it's highlighted in red. In the top right hand corner, open up the inspector, then go to the effects tab and you should see the prism blur settings within there. If you don't see all of these settings, just give prism blur a click to open up the settings underneath. Now the first thing to change is this blur strength. So by default it adds blur, it is the prism blur after all, but what I like to do is just knock that all the way down and it just reduces all of the blur so then you're just left with this RGB effect. And then underneath that you've got aberration distance and aberration strength. And these are what you play with to adjust the amount of this effect that you want. So if I increase the distance, it's going to increase the distance from the original subject for this aberration. So you can see if we increase that, these lines are getting longer or shorter. So you can just adjust those to get it looking exactly as you want them. And underneath that, you've got strength, which just controls the strength of that aberration effect. So you can just increase those, mess with them, get them looking exactly as you want them. The vignette size isn't actually anything to do with this. It just adds an actual vignette, so you can play with that if you want to. And at the very top, we've got this position. So by default, the aberration is right in the center. So you can see, if we look at this person here, everything's sort of radiating off her. But if we just change the position, we can move things over to the left, to the right, up or down. So we can just adjust the settings to get them looking exactly as I want them. I'm going to leave it as center, so I'm just going to double click on position to revert it back like so. And then if we hit play, it looks something like this. So we've got this cool RGB split aberration style effect. And it's as easy as that. Now there's another quick tip I'm going to show you, so I'm just going to come onto a different piece of footage, which is this one here, of this girl in the bar. Now we want to apply the same prism blur effect, but I actually want to mask it a little bit so that my subject stays a little bit cleaner, a little bit sharper, and then the aberration effect is just happening all around her. Really useful for things like music videos and that sort of thing. So for this one, what we want to do, highlight it once again so it's highlighted on your timeline, and then we're going to jump straight into the color tab. Once you're in the color tab, just make sure you're on the right piece of footage as I am here. Open up your nodes so you should see these nodes over on the right hand side. If you don't see the nodes, just click on the word nodes up in the top right hand corner to activate those. Give this one a click so it's highlighted and then use the keyboard shortcut Alt and S just to create a duplicate node like so. Give that one a click and then what we want to do is just to apply the same prism blur effect but we're going to do it directly within the color tab. So if you didn't know there's an open effects tab in the top right hand corner here if we give that a click we get most of the same open effects effects within the color tab as well. So we're just going to scroll down until we get to the same area the resolve fx stylize and then we're going to grab prism blur and we're just going to drag that onto that node there like so. We have all of the same settings, so I'm going to reduce the blur. Let's just go mad. Let's increase the aberration distance and then the strength. We'll put the strength right up. And then you'll also notice within here, you've got this little star within your preview. This controls the position. So rather than using the position controls, you can just drag this around to get it looking as you want it. And if we just hit play, we've got something that looks like this. So let's say you just wanted to do a little bit of masking just to clean things up in a certain area of your clip. With this node selected, come down here to this little toolbar right in the middle, and then we're gonna give this one a click, which is our window. And then I'm just gonna select a circle. 
which is going to put a circle on our preview window. Super quick, editor's note, once you've added the power window, if you don't actually see the controls on your preview, all you need to do is come down to this little drop down to the bottom left of the preview screen. It may have defaulted to the open FX overlay when you added the prism blur. So just click the little drop down and change it to power window, and then you'll see your controls on screen. Okay, carry on. And at the moment, what's happening is everywhere within the circle has this aberration effect. But if we click on this icon here, that will invert that. So now everything outside of the circle has the effect. So then we can just move this circle wherever we want it. So I'm just going to put it somewhat on this lady in the middle. I'm just going to do it really rough for now. I want it to have a really nice blended edge. At the moment, it's quite a harsh edge. So if you look here, you've got these two dots. The outer dot, if we stretch that, that just increases sort of the blend for the circle. So then it's not so harsh. I'm just going to go with something like that. And if I want to just really see the effect without all these lines on, underneath the preview window, you've got this little drop down. It's currently on power window, which is why we can see our window. If we just change that to off, and then we can see how it's going to look. So now if we just hit play, we've got this really sharp bit in the middle without the RGB effect, but we've got the RGB aberration prism blur going around the outside like so. If we just hop back into the edit tab, have a little look. There it is. It's as easy as that. And that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me any thoughts, feelings, comments, or whatever down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.